My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And loads of people sent me this. <laughs> loads of people sent me this comment, and I'll put the comment on the screen. It said, revving the engine to red line makes the piston go all the way to the top of the engine, where if you drive normally, you don't wear out that bit. If you normally drive, the piston only goes up and down a bit, not all the way, hence why nowhere on your block. Since you do most of your driving in the 1500 to 3000 RPM range, it pays to be careful to get that bit working good first. Worry about the rest of the engine later, I say. A lot of people put comment stuff like, oh, what a fucking dumb ass. This, that and the other. You know, uh, internet wisdom and stuff. The guy is not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. Loads of people jumped on the bandwagon saying this guy's talking shite. He isn't entirely wrong, it's just badly worded. So what the fucking hell do I mean? When you have a cylinder like this and you have a piston, the piston really shouldn't contact the, the cylinder wall. It should be your piston rings. There is piston slap and all the rest of it. But... What can happen is, it, uh, as this piston goes up and down, what will happen is you'll see a ridge. You'll see a ridge form like this in your cylinder wall. Right? If we massively exaggerate it, it looks something like this. Right? And this is because your displacement or your stroke, you know, is fixed for non-variable compression engines. So basically your rings will wipe up to there before the piston comes back down. You know what I mean? like that so the piston the actual top of the piston crown isn't really doing this where there is a bit of rattle there but compared to the piston rings this is as far as they go in their stroke from you know tdc to bdc so tdc been up here and bdc been down here all is good and gravy now if you do it's a bit different with cars because the accelerations aren't that high however for bikes, this is, you know, a big thing. And what can happen is, is the rings can actually hit this ridge. How does this happen? You know, the displacement isn't changing. This just seems like bullshit. But it's not bullshit. If you go around and rev your engine and you basically, you know, cruise around on it for the next 20,000 miles and you've got from, you know, a 1,000 RPM at tickover all the way to, you know, it does, I don't know, 13,000 RPM, something shit like that. If you spend most of your life here, you know, just say you never go above 8,000 RPM. And there are quite a lot of people who do this, believe it or not. There are a lot of guys who don't just rag the shit out of their engine. If you do this far, then your piston rings, if we were looking, it's not the same, but if your piston rings are basically going up to there and up to there. And just say that's TDC and that's BDC. These are not on the same scale or anything like that. I'm just saying that when you rev this engine backwards and forwards, it does that up to this RPM. So, no, let's not put that. So let's say at uh, TDC at this range and TDC at this range, that's a better way of writing it, is that your piston rings will climb slightly higher in the ball. Well, why do they do this? Well, it's because um, we're talking about acceleration and masses so forces, stuff like that. And as this thing wings round like this, when you get to the top, basically the whole thing is going like this, right? The whole thing, all the clearances get tighter because this has been thrust up like this and it's the crankshaft that basically stops this from happening. The crankshaft will not sit in the top of the roof of its bearings, but it will basically squish the oil. So you could say, there's your oil with your bearings in it, there's your, your bore, your main journal bore like this. And then when it gets thrust up like this, your crank pin goes up higher, the pressure increases here, you know, your oil pressure, so on and so forth. Now, the faster you accelerate, it's not about top speeds, all the top speeds, higher RPM do equal, um, you know, higher piston speeds, because obviously the engine's going faster. But it's when you accelerate. If you accelerate from going, you know, you're tuning along and you give it the fucking wide open throttle and give it the beans. Not only is the engine going faster, but from second to second, the engine is going faster. So the engine itself is accelerating, which means even though each single stroke, the basically, if you're doing 8,000 RPM and then you go to 13,000 RPM very, very quickly, 
then your piston acceleration increases. It's not just about um, where it is in the stroke, it's also the fact that you're going from a lower speed to a higher speed. And the quicker you do that, the higher the acceleration. And if you go wide open throttle in any gear, um, usually actually in lower gears, if you go lower gears because there's less load on the bike because there's less wind resistance, stuff like that, what will happen is, is that everything basically starts to bottom out. So there's your hole for your crank main journal and there's your crank pin like this. And then on this you have um, your wrist pin like so, like this. And then this kind of fucking basically bottoms out. So your piston climbs just that bit higher than where it was. So this is where it used to be and instead the piston climbs. Now it's only a tiny bit, we're only talking micron, stuff like that, maybe 20 micron, something like that. The other thing is as well is that the highest acceleration for a piston is when it goes to the top on the exhaust stroke. So she's screaming up here and it kind of, you know, it basically stretches the rod, the rod will stretch. Now there'll be some guys, I know there will be, there'll be some guys going, oh, that's absolutely bollocks. <laughs> That's absolutely bollocks. Now, let's see if I can find it. Oh, do you know what? I've boxed it away. <laughs> right then. And we're back. <laughs> so this is a piston from a drag racer. And if you look at the top of this, once she focuses, there we are. If you look at the top of this, you can see these marks here. Oh, no, there we are, there we are. You can see the marks there. You can see a slight one there. So this is the intake, this is the exhaust. The intake has higher lift than the exhaust. You can see that it's basically just been butting it. Now it has this relief here so the valves don't butt it. This is a dragster piston from a V8. And I think this was a methanol. This has been so violent, because they're all about acceleration, that's the extreme of it. This has been so violently been chucked up and down, and the thing weighs, I don't know, maybe 50, 50, 500, maybe 800. My magical hand scales out, out of calibration. Basically, this thing's been going up and down and been accelerated so much that it's actually stretched the rod, and two of the rods that I have are actually out of spec because they've stretched too much. Now, these are aluminium rods. Um, but this just shows you it's happening. What's happening is, is this thing has been violently accelerating so quickly, violent acceleration, um, that it's basically starting to kiss the valves. Now, it's not the fact that their valve clearances are wrong. It's just that they push the engine to so much extreme that it ends up kissing the valves. So when they assembled this engine, it wasn't kissing the valves. When they run the engine medium speed, it doesn't kiss the valves, otherwise it would have fucked it. But when they do a massive run, it starts kissing the valves. And this is quite common in drag racing, especially for top fuel stuff. They try and alleviate it a bit more, but sometimes when you're running it, you know, it's just not enough. And that's what's happening is their rods are literally stretching under the force because this is tensile stress, this is pulling. Every material that I know known to, known to me and known to man, the tensile stress is, um, or basically the tensile strength is always lower than the compressive strength. You know, it's like an elastic band. If you think about it, you could pull it, pull it, and then it'll snap. Where you try and compress an elastic band until it gives up. It's a bad analogy in a sense. It's just one I could think of really quickly. Um, and this is all to do with the fact is that something will stretch until it fails because it's crystalline, stuff like that. Where compression, it basically just squeezes it all together and it resists this squashing. Where, in other words, it's like... You know, you can pull, you can push something and all the atoms basically are just getting closer and closer and closer. So their bonds between each other, well, they're just getting closer and closer and closer. It's not really breaking the bonds where if you pull them apart, they get to a certain point where their sphere of influence of holding on to each other just diminishes to nothing. And then they let go and just disappear. Canonical. Can 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 fuck off. But anyway, well going off on a tangent there. The fact of the matter is, is that your crank pin and your uh, crank pin to con rod, so your main journals, your crank pin journals, your um, wrist pin, stuff like that, they have a little mo uh, room in there, a bit of clearance, and they will take up this clearance. And eventually, if you give it enough acceleration, if you accelerate it quick enough, 
you can literally stretch the rod itself um you know so if you 1000 on a car it's difficult to do but on a bike because they can accelerate so quickly you will actually just start to eat into that um that bit that had that region that hasn't been touched so you'll have that region there that lip and if you ride your bike for 50,000 miles and never go above 8,000 rpm there's going to be one hell of a, a, a lip you'll be able to catch your nail on so now and then this is a good thing now and then it's a good thing just to thrash the tits out of it <laughs> you know what i mean just thrash the shit out of it it's not a bad thing to do and like i say you can do this pretty much in any gear and the lower gears are in a sense better because there's less load on the bike which is the resistance that's slowing everything down um even just revving and redlining when the bike is in neutral that's generally where you'll get the most because there's no resistance and the engine will just rev up so now and then revving your engine in neutral just sat there is not a bad thing because basically what you're doing is is you're just helping smudging a bit of this away so this lip isn't so prominent hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit oh and yeah getting back to that comment the guy didn't explain it that well um what he means but it's not crap what he's saying people are like this guy's full of shit it's not it's not shit hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit <laughs>